wait to have Jim Lampley announce his fights, and I sent him back a emoji of a crying tear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget about us. How, how quickly these kids want to move yeah. on from us. <laughs> but but like, I even make the joke with some of these kids, like with Tanahara and everybody else. Like, look, we've seen you at the Belasco. We've seen you come up. Your goal is to never have me announcing your fight. There you go. Because that means you moved on. That's like to that's right. View. That's like Bernard Hopkins getting out of jail. You know, oh, <laughs> don't come back. Don't come. <laughs> <laughs> Our co-feature of the night is getting ready. Hector Ambriz from Ensenada, Baja California, Mexico. As Pablo Flores are ringing us for bringing him in. Uh, Robert Garcia bringing him in. Cuñado and Tanahara walking into. Tigres del Norte, who's bumping that music? Let's go. San Antonio's own. 12 0 with the five KOs. Seven, mis vacas. I'm interested in this fight. Yeah, this guy, Ambris, looks uh, tough. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for eight rounds of boxing in the Super Featherweight Division. Damas y caballeros, ocho rounds de combate en la división de peso Super Pluma. Presented by Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. Cerveza Tecate, the official beer of boxing. En Casa Mexico Tequila, it's in the taste. Your three judges scoring. Jerry Cantu, Jonathan Davis, and Max DeLuca. And when the action begins, your international referee, Jack Reese. Introducing to you first, the fighter standing in the blue corner, wearing green and red. He's the official weight, 129.6 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina de Cate Azul, vistiendo pantaloncillo verde con rojo, con un peso de 129.6 libras. In his professional campaign, he stands with a record of 12 wins, four losses, one draw, and six of his wins coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 12 victorias, cuatro derrotas, un empate y seis de estas victorias por la vía del knockout de la bella Cenicienta del Pacífico, Ensenada Baja California. opponent across the ring is standing in the red corner wearing burgundy trunks with gold trim and in his corner renowned trainer Robert Garcia with an official weight of 130 pounds y su rival en la esquina de Cate Roca vistiendo pantaloncillo morado con dorado con un peso de 130 libras as a professional he stands undefeated with 12 victories no losses and five of his victories coming by the fast way of knockout presenta un record invicto de 12 victorias cero derrotas y cinco de esas victorias por la vía del knockout representing representando san antonio texas hector And here is with the final instructions con las indicaciones finales, Jack Reeves. Está bien. Está bien. This is good also. I gave you both instructions. I just want to remind you to listen, obey my commands at all times, please. And protect yourself at all times. Pelea duro, pelea limpio, toca lo mano. Jack Reese with an Espanol. Tell of the tape, Doug. Do it in English, please. <laughs> two young guys, two young junior lightweights. Tanahara, just one year younger at uh, 21. He is the taller man, and uh, he has the reach advantage. Eh, como siempre, saludos a nuestro gran amigo de Zona ESPN, Barbosa Box. He's watching us right now, as always. He's in a ringside state of mind, checking us out. Appreciate everybody checking us out tonight on Ring TV. Bethel Duran, uh, Doug Fisher. You're watching Hector Tanahara in the purple, uh, taking on Hector Ambriz. A couple of Hectors going at it. You know, it's strange. So the tell of the tape tells us that Tanahara is the taller of the two, but now that they're in the ring and fighting each other, Ambriz looks like he's a little bit taller. Yeah, Ambriz uh, talked to him briefly yesterday at the weigh-in. First time ever to the United States. 
you see him on the back of his truck at Ensenada, Baja California. That's where Carnival Cruise Line stops when you're on that weekend uh, bender. And that's not too far. No, it's about an hour south of Rosarito, about right. an hour and a half from uh, Tijuana. Yeah. He said, uh, that, that, you know, not much boxing down there. He's like, there's some, but to get real good sparring, I go to Tijuana a lot and get that quality work. But he said he knows a lot about uh, Tanahata, watches videos of him, knows that Tanahata's been dropped once in his career. That was a few fights ago. There's Hector, signed by Golden Boy Promotions. It was the you know, aspirations of going to the Olympics when he was a teenager. He changed the rule. You know, you can now fight without the headgear. And they decided, you know, there was a good offer from Golden Boy. Robert Garcia's manager took the deal, made the money, and here he is now uh, with 12 victories, five KOs. He started off career early with the early knockouts you know, against guys that are supposed to get knocked out. They matched him up nicely. They Roberto Diaz and Javier Rosso, the matchmakers for Golden Boy, against real men yeah, he that was can in take against, punches. He was in against tougher, stronger, more mature opponents last year. He fought four times in 2017, and it was good for him to go those rounds and experience that professional resistance because we're seeing the benefits of that right now a mature and measured approach to this opening round. I like the jab, and I like every time he lands the jab, he steps to either side, gets out of range. He's, fighting a, he's boxing a very disciplined game plan right now. That's slip. Push down. Jack Reese right on top of it. But looking at uh, Ambrisa's record on box rack, it looks like he's, he's, been in, he's been in with some tough opponents. And his loss is only knocked out once. That was back in 2015. Since then, his only losses have been eight round decisions uh, against uh, respectable looking opponents. Uh, and, and they appear to have been competitive fights. Body shot from Ambris. Tanahara, one, two. 10 seconds to go in the opening round. The co-main tonight, Tanahara Ambris, in the LA Fight Club, the Velasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Chest misses with the left hook. Some jostling for position on the inside, but really the story of that opening round, Beto, was the jab of Tanahara. That won it for him. Francisco Salazar, F. Salazar Boxing. He works for you, doesn't he, Doug? Yes, he does. With a good tweet. Does a fine job. Also a teacher in the 805. So he knows Robert Garcia and the clan very well. And he's a coach. Soccer coach. Girls soccer. Also does the coach JV baseball. Jack of all trades in the sport of boxing. Hector Tanahata, you see him throwing that left hook. And just speaking to Brett briefly yesterday, like, what have you noticed about yourself the last year? He said, well, that hook I used to throw that knocked people out, guys can take it now. <laughs> like, the quality of opponent is a lot better. And that's something as you progress, sure. you're learning it. He said, by realizing these guys can take the punch, and defend against it, I had to work on other things. I, he said he got too much in love with that left hook. Sure. I, I don't blame him. It was a beautiful punch. Yeah. Well, I'm seeing a much more disciplined game from him. Uh, much better technique. Keeping that right hand in position. Block shots, although he got, he got smacked with the hook right there. But the jab is smart, and I like that he's mixed mixing in straight punches to the body. Do some straight rights to the midsection of Ambris, who gave a respectable effort in the opening round and continues to in round two. Ambris doesn't look like a fighter who's in the United States for the first time. Doesn't look like a fighter who's intimidated at all is coming in on the B side. Not at all. Look at him moving around, bouncing, slapping his punches. 
and he's landing some shots. He and looks it, like he's having some fun in there. Yeah, and it wasn't working for him um, stalking Tanahara in round one, so now he's taking a few steps back and is moving around and is trying to lure Tanahara in. We'll see if he can set traps. <laughs> 130 pounders. That division, if you think 130 pounders is going, little boy, you're thinking Ryan Garcia is a highlight machine. It's natural to compare the two. Yep. Yeah, Golden Boy has a lot of junior lightweight standouts. You got Ryan Garcia, you got Hector Tanahara. You're looking at right now. Ooh, Good. that well-timed right crosses uh, in the final minute of, of this uh, round two from Tanahara. Uh, we also have Lamont Roach Jr. Yep. He is also a junior lightweight standout. He'll be fighting in Puerto Rico on the 19th on ESPN. And no excuses boxing in DC. 30 seconds to go in the second. Tanahata with a good body shot wow. and a smirk. And he's putting, from more, he's putting more leverage on these shots now. He wasn't loading up early. Now, uh, towards the end of round two, he's landing with more authority. So he's taking his time and he's showing signs of, of maturation as a boxer. Stiff jab. Tanahata. You hit him, you hurt him, you made him think. Keep going with the cross and the, the overhand. I think it's a replay from that second round. Tanahara flashing a brilliant jab in round two. Set up that perfect straight right, right down the pike. There's the jab, landing right on the chin. There's the jab again, splitting the guard of Ambris. But it's not, Tanahara is not untouchable. Ambris landed some shots in there. It was a nice left uppercut. Not sure if it landed for Tanahara, but he's looking for it. And there's the right cross. A straight right was landing for Tanahara. Third round of action, Hector Tanahara. You mentioned trained by Robert Garcia. You look at him, you see the development of this youngster. He was 21 years old. The Robert Garcia Boxing Academy out in Riverside is also where Mikey Garcia trains. What Tanahara spars mostly with Mikey Garcia. It's an education. In the past, he sparred with Brandon Rios, Eric DeLeon, Jojo Diaz when Jojo was heavier coming down in weight and he needed a taller fighter. That's the work he gets. So there's some kids where it doesn't matter where you're at, you might always be the top dog in your right. gym. Tanahara walks in there thinking he's somebody, and then he's like, oh, wait a minute, I gotta wait to even skip rope around here. Right, and that, that would have been the case had Tanahara remained in San Antonio. That's why you come to Southern California, or to a Las Vegas, um, or to other parts where the boxing scene is very hot, because the competition in the gym uh, helps you to raise your game. And it's just part of that learning process, and you could you could tell uh, Tanahara is learning. If you're watching him for the first time, like, okay, he lives in Riverside, he left San Antonio. Yeah, this is their college right here. They live in the house that Robert owns. It's he and whatever prospects are going through at the time, and uh -huh. usually uh, Joshua Franco or Jonathan Navarro, and they're there. Eat, sleep, and breathe boxing, body work from Tanahara. That's the way it should be. I, I got a tweet here from 956 Boxing Coach, which is James Gogi. Oh, I love a, following him. A veteran boxing insider based in Texas, and he says, as green as Ryan Garcia is, I still have him ahead of Tanahara at this stage. Tanahara still looks like he needs to grow into his man strength. That might be true. So Tanahara is 12 and 0. He has five knockouts. Um, and maybe, yeah, maybe in the next year or so, uh, we'll see more power from him. He doesn't have the athleticism, the natural speed and snap on his shots that Ryan Garcia has. And that's why Ryan Garcia has a, a, a lot of attention right now. Like you said, he's a highlight real machine. Well-deserved for and, Ryan. Exactly, and that's a beautiful thing. 
Um, but I would also um, look at Tanahara's foundation, which looks pretty solid and is getting better. A couple of fights ago, Tanahara was dropped for the first time ever in his career. Amateurs, sparring, anything. He said it was a learning experience. He barely beat the count. He said that night, and from there, at the, his following fight, he was a little gun shy. He still had to get over it. He said then realized that Mikey Garcia told him, look, I got dropped early in my career. True. Get over it. Yep. And after that, he said, I don't care. I'm going to come in there and fight. He said, but fighting that guy, who was a man at that time, made him realize it's not going to be easy. Right. You have to work even harder. He's like, I'd rather get dropped early in my career and then get t my chin tested in a championship fight where I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, Tanahara's won the first three rounds, but this fight hasn't been easy. No. Stay close, go forward. I love that Ambris is a uh, cut man. The back of his, uh, his jacket is uh, represented for a billiards hall in Ensenada. Oh, cool. Speaking of Rocky, remember when Rocky had a uh, 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 Polly sold a. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> he was selling advertising yeah. on the back. Hey, maybe they hold fights at that pool hall. Maybe unsanctioned, definitely unsanctioned. Oh, definitely. Unsanctioned. They probably do. Hey, because uh, anytime there's a guy from Tijuana, I always look at their box trick and always say, Vi, uh, Villar Rancho Grande or something like right. that. Right. Or some cantina. Fourth round of action scheduled for eight. Tanahara Jr. in the purple. He's the undefeated fighter against Hector Ambris. Nicknamed El Estudiante. Ambris is a college student. Criminal justice major. Like, what do you want to do? He's like, I don't know. Maybe go to law school. Maybe. Join the police force. He's a young man, has his whole life ahead of him. Only 22 years old. Estudiante translates to student. But Ambrice is a, is, a, is a decent fighter. He's not bad. That he's only been stopped once in his career. The other fights where he lost, the other three were decisions. Right. And I think that knockout loss would have happened when he was 18 years old. Yeah, it happened early on in his career. According to him, it was a fight he shouldn't have taken. But it was a last minute replacement. The money was good. Oh, that was a nice right cross landed by Ambris. Ambris from Guardado's gym. And then Sanada looks up to Leo Santa Cruz, Triple G. Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez. It's quite a pantheon right there. <laughs> he only started boxing at the age of 16. Uh, he said the way to learn to defend himself, his friend actually took him. Now, what happened to the friend? He's like, oh, we don't talk anymore. That guy went down the wrong path. Ooh, yeah. He said, but he loved the the discipline that boxing brings. Well, that's, a, that's a story of boxing. and. and uh, we have a similar story with Jose Vargas out of Pasadena, who was having a lot of problems. His uh, parents move him out of Pasadena to Lancaster and get him involved in boxing to get him out of trouble. But a late start. Vargas started at 15, and this guy Ambry starts at 16. Um, and boxing has a way of focusing them. And, they, and, and they're good learners, obviously, um, despite the, the late start. Both guys know how to fight. That hook that Tanahara just landed, those are the ones that are knocking people out early on in his career. As Ambriz tries to land this hook of his own. We're gonna miss. Body shot from Ambriz. Tanahara moving around good. Ambriz is caging. Yeah. He's kind he's, he's kind of difficult, has kind of a no, 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 no. kind of an unorthodox rhythm. Te metes y te metes con tu jab. 
la clave aquí para que él, él, él desaparezca su, su volado es subir a tu mano derecha, ¿eh? Es la única. Let your speed go. He looks tired. Left to the body as Ambris lands a left hook. Another left to the body, left to the head combination from Tanahara. Oh, and a beautiful right cross. Probably the punch of that round, if not the fight, landed by Ambris. And when you pay, play matchmaker and you think down the line one day Tanahara might fight uh, uh, Ryan Garcia, you think to yourself, if Garcia lands that, that flush right, whew, maybe the fight's over. Clay Stevenson, Glitter Road, watching us. Appreciate you sending the tweets. What's up, Clay? Glitter Road watches all of our streams. Does he? Oh, yeah. His uh, location says global. <laughs> Tanahata represented the United States all over the world. There's actually a Robert Garcia Boxing Academy San Antonio edition that Hector's father, Hector Sr., runs. A lot of youngsters doing quality work. Ooh, maybe there was a, a, a semi-low blow. No, I think he's complaining about a shot below the belt. Mark, he caused it by holding his head. That's why he caught it. Come here. You caused it by holding his head. Don't hold his head, that's why he hit low. Stop it, all right? That's un momento. Está bien? Listo? So there was a low blow. Listo? Okay. But Jack Reese, um, you're the one responsible for it. Well, Ombre's got a little break anyways. He's able to, to catch his breath, recover a little bit. Well, you heard Ombre's corner tell him, let your hands go, use your speed. He's been more of a defensive fighter. Stop, 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 stop. See, this right there, Doug, that's what young fighters need to go through, right? That learning how to break away from clinches. Exactly. And and without the, getting without getting clipped. To tie up. That, and, that and, stuff and, right there, right? Right. And manhandle your opponent and position them where you want to position them. Seeing ta uh, Tanahara do that. Nice cross landed by Tanahara. Looks like Amaris is just trying to tie up Tanahara and frustrate him. Yeah. Not letting his hands go like his corner has instructed him. But that's all part of the learning experience through your first 15 fights, right? Yeah, I see. I think Ambris should be letting his. He should be more offensive-minded because the shots are there for him to land. He, he saw that in the last round. Right now, he's doing more tying up, and he's doing more. His lateral movement is giving Tanahara more trouble than his punches are. You, you don't win rounds like that. Tanahara is having to figure out how to defend when he's being tied up in the inside and how to get out of those. And that was a borderline shot that Ambrise is playing up. It was right on the belt. This is the second, it's the second time you pull this head. You need to tell them to stop holding the head and pulling down the head. Okay? Next time I'm going to call it a knockdown. Okay? Does anybody in Ambrise's corner Same speak thing. English though? Pulling his head down, he's I don't think so. Low. Okay? But Ambrise has the body it, language okay? of a Stop. guy who's running Hold out of steam it. and has run out of okay. ideas. Suerte, so let him go. It's 10 seconds, 10 segundos, pelea. That'll do it for five. He just told them right here, don't do anything with that head. Yeah. Well, it was pretty low. I thought it was right on the belt line. Well, you can't really see from here. The reaction is that it was like right on the cup. It didn't appear to be that low. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a belt line shot. 
but it probably was below the belly button of Ambris. And he just turns away. You know, you really shouldn't do that, though. Yeah. You might say it's not like blow. right, exactly. but the referee doesn't. Exactly, and that's what Jack Reeves did. Say. And a more ruthless opponent might have nailed him while he was turning away and bending at the waist like that. But Hector Tanahari Jr. is a nice guy. Hector knows eyes are on him. No holding. Can he steal the show? Marlena Sparza says she's going to put one on tonight in the main event. Here's Leticia Campana. Boxing Love 3003. Appreciate you watching. Everybody else watching on the ringtv.com or if you're on the Golden Boy social media pages. Belasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Cool venue. Those people you see on your screen right there, standing room only for 25 bucks. Great spot to experience some of the up and comers. Yeah, and the hobnob with uh, your fellow boxing fans and other professional boxers and boxing people. Have a few drinks. RJ Wolf in Texas. We appreciate you watching. Love Doug and Stas on Lara and Heard. It wasn't a production delay earlier, baby. That's called show prep. That's what happens when you get a first round knockout. Yeah. You go deep in the well. And it's kind of hot. I'm trying to step in on the gas right here in the sixth. Separate. Um, but he's not giving him any room to work with. Hundred thirty pound division that Gold the Boy has. Carlos Morales. Uh, also, Charles Huerta, who's going to be fighting soon at the Velasco. Good Ooh, body work from That was a beautiful Tanahara. left hook to the body from Tanahara, who is stepping up the tempo. So he senses the fatigue and the trepidation in Ambris, and he's looking to press his advantage. Ambris' hands getting a little bit lower here. Picks him up briefly, and they drop. And Ambris' punches have lost some steam. And he wasn't much of a puncher to begin with. He's winging him now here in the six. Yeah, he doesn't have the, 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 the best punch technique. He kind of swats with his shots, doesn't turn him over. That hook moved him. And he's pawing with this jab now. Tanahata started to sit down on his punches with less than a minute to go in the six. Yep. Tanahara eats a couple jabs, but prior to that, he landed that hook to the body, hook to the chin combination. Hundred thirty pounders also. Tanahara shouldn't abandon his straight right. That was a punch that was landing for him in the first two rounds, and it's there for him from mid-range and from the outside. But Robert Garcia asked for more pressure and a little bit more aggression, so as he try as he presses forward, I think it's natural for Tanahara to rely more on his left, on his jab and the hooks to the body and head. The Chameleon is a song. Don't stand still. He wants you, to stop, wants you to stop so he can drop you. Missed right, left to the body that lands for Tanahara. A hook cross combination, doesn't quite land. A left to the midsection from Ambris. Hook to the body, hook to the head combination, lands for Hector Tanahara, who then eats a jab from Ambris. Black Top Boxing in San Antonio tweets, Ryan Garcia won't beat Tech Tanahara Jr., just FYI, Durant Sports. Prop to the kid, but there's levels to this. Uh, for the record, neither Doug or I gave a prediction of the fight. Yeah, I'm not predicting anything. Yeah, we're they haven't fought yet, and they're both still in the developmental stage of their their young careers. We're just saying as the careers progress, yeah. that's a fight that eventually will be made. 
thank you for watching and using the hashtag RingTVLive. There's some other Golden Boy prospects who fight at 130. Doesn't Joe Gonzalez fight at 130? Uh, he's not as advanced. No, no, he doesn't Joe? have 10 fights yet. Or is he heavier? I think he's a little bit heavier. Okay. I love how Joe looked in that last show. Uh huh. He looks like a beast. Tanahara last year I mentioned he signed when he was 18 and been moved quickly. And at the end of last year, this kid was just mentally exhausted. Living in San Antonio, goes to see the family for a week after a fight, then comes back to Riverside Train and just talking with him, he said that he needed a mental break. So Robert Garcia, who's also his manager, said, look, go home, don't do anything boxing related. Go enjoy being a kid. Have fun with your friends. I mean, don't go crazy with the food or anything like that, yeah. but go to the mall, go to the movie. Yeah, and Robert understands that, having been a fighter himself. Yeah. So Tanahata enjoyed the rest of 2017. He called Robert, said, I'm ready to come back to Riverside. Now I'm ready to go. He said, I needed that break because the body just needs it mentally Burnout, also. Burnout's a real thing. It's, and it's, it, it's as much mental as it is physical. You can only train so much and run so much and getting up by 5 in the morning. First of all, getting up at 5 in the morning sucks. It doesn't matter what job you got, <laughs> let alone when you want to go run. National resistance from Hector Ambris in the red and yellow. He Good takes a right. hard right to his ear. Yep. That's that's a hard punch to take. And that left of the body is, I mean, Tanahara has found a target for it. You see the development of Hector Tanahara. And you see when he decides to step up the, his intensity and his pressure, he can do so. A year ago, he would have stepped it up and probably gassed himself out well, he in a round. Done, he would have done so prematurely because he's looking for that first round knockout. He's not doing that anymore. The education of a young boxer. So I love working with you and Steve because you see things as these guys progress and move forward. It's also like James Hogue out of Houston. Uh, 9 by 6 boxing, how he tweets. Some of the great stuff that he tweets oh, about. Sure. Eddie Fudge and his, yeah. his conversations with yeah, Don Shargan and yeah, all that other stuff. Gogi, uh, Gogi is a real student of the game, has been a trainer, and he's been, he's been a manager for, for decades. And that's one of the real joys of covering boxing is watching the progression of a young fighter into a, a, a mature boxer. Some people will say, look, Tanahara win eight rounds, won a decision. But, yeah, it might not be flashy first-round KO or second-round highlight where the guy gets off his feet. But the education you get here. I, I think Gogi was tweeting the other day about a conversation he had with Don Sharkers, who I remember you had a great one with him a couple years ago when we were up in Salinas. Yeah. And how he said he wouldn't put a guy up uh, on a championship fight. He, he didn't have a loss. Right. Because you want, yeah. to, you want to know that this guy is tested. Exactly. And that's definitely the old school approach and mentality. How many guys have we seen where they're 30-0 and 0 and all of a sudden they get clocked for the first yeah. time? And they don't know where they are. Like some of these heavyweights. Oh, yeah. They get brought up. And right. It's like, it's like, wait, how did that guy become a champion already? <laughs> Eighth round of action. And our co-feature, Marlena Sparza, Leticia Campana coming up next. Jamal Herring, uh, a 135-pound standout and a U.S. Olympian, says, Dougie Fisher, you're forgetting to mention that Lamont Roach Jr. fights at 130 pounds, too. No, I, no, no, I, no, no. I didn't forget. I, I did, J J Jamal. Jamal. I mentioned, I mentioned Lamont Roach. I think he was one of the first guys that I mentioned. Jamal, Jamal Herring, first of all, hoorah. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your service. And we are big fans of Lamont Roach and the No Excuses Gym because they don't mess around. Yep. Rest in peace to Boogaloo, Coach yep. Boogaloo. Uh, and Lamont, you're going to see him April 19th on ESPN in Puerto Rico is the main event. Yeah, Beto gave him that plug as yes. well, the ESPN plug. And, uh, and, and we're also Jamel Herring fans as well. I enjoy watching I love Jamel Jamel's, fight. I love yeah. Jamel's too. I think Jamel would be an excellent broadcaster. Yeah. Maybe he, could be, maybe he can start writing for Ring TV. 
Facebook.com. All are welcome. I'll say that, though. You're going to get some emails. If you can put a sentence together. <laughs> Halfway through the eighth and final round, Hector Tanahata had to work tonight. Body work. Hit with the right by the game, Ambriz. I would describe Ambriz as pesky in this fight. Solid right by Tanahata. He wasn't a, a physical task for, for Tanahara, but he was in there. He was in every round. He's landing punches. Didn't have the power or the physical strength to, to really threaten Tanahara, but he definitely made him think, was able to frustrate him at points. He also gave him the angle. Yes, he did. Which I, Tana, and Tanahara is going to need to learn how to deal with that. Yeah, I think I've done almost all of Tanahara's fights. This might be the first guy that moves this much yeah. for Hector. Landed an uppercut right there, and Tanahara nods at him like, yep, you, you got me. You're tricky. I need to go see this sparring that he has with Mike Garcia in Riverside. Yeah. That'll teach you to be on your P's and Q's. It's also a closed gym. No cameras allowed in there. Uh -oh. Even Ellie Secback? Yeah, you can't record anything oh, you inside can't record the gym. Sparring. Oh, okay. Well, I know Secback's always around yeah. uh, the, the Garcia clan. Yeah, but you don't know what it looks like. Oh. Good, solid fight for Hector Tanahata Jr., a learning experience as he goes the distance with Hector Ambriz, a very game fighter from Ensenada, Mexico. This one will go to the cards. And Tanahata will be able to go and enjoy Fiesta, which is coming up in San Antonio. He'll go and have some Whataburger as all Texans re Respect That's and enjoy. mandatory. Oh, yeah. They'll argue with me about in and out and all that good yeah. stuff. And also, uh, Jamal Herring is going to fight May 12th against Pablo Sanchez in New York City. A standout female fighter named Sulem Urbina says Gennaro Gomez, also with Golden Boy and Tanahara, went to war in the amateurs. I'm going to have to look for those fights. Yeah, uh, Gomez, I thought you see the Jamal Herring tweet. Uh, Gomez, Sulem, Urbina, just to let you know, is scheduled to fight at 135. And I say scheduled, and I'm not being a jerk here. Yeah. The kid has yet to make 135. Right. He is scheduled to fight next Thursday on ESPN against Filipino Reki Dule at a fight at 135. Uh, and Gomez, and I, I've said I hope Gomez him. makes the weight because I think he's at his best at 135. I think at 140, he's a little bit too heavy for his body frame because yeah. he's a compact little guy. But explosive power and, a, and, and a Sulem, natural I, fighter. Sulem, I am a big fan of Gomez and his family. His dad's a great guy. Uh, but when, as broadcasters, we have to say the truth. When you're scheduled for 135 and all of a sudden the next day there's a new weight on our, on our belt sheet and it says 138. Yeah. And it's the main, the, it's the A side fighter who doesn't make the weight. Yeah. You have to wonder how dedicated he is. And he's with Robert Garcia, and Robert's been very adamant about this kid needs to make 135 and he can be something special. Yeah. He no, has I've, so much talent. I've heard good things. I've heard from a uh, former featherweight title holder, a very ex experienced pro, uh, Billy Dibb, was very much impressed with uh, some sparring sessions that he had with General Gomez out in uh, Indio, Coachella area. But tonight it was Hector Tanahata, the 130-pounder. Quality work against Ambri. I said this one goes to the cards. Referee, um, referee, the judges tallying it together. Yeah, and from these highlights, you see Ambri was in the fight. Uh, I thought he lost every uh, every round. He was having some trouble with some uh, borderline low blows, low blows that he caught from Tanahara. He was able to land punches, wasn't able to hurt Tanahara. And Tanahara landed some really hard shots, and wasn't really able to to, to shake Ambrice too bad. So Ambrice got a good good set of whiskers. I can see Ambrice coming back and fighting a 130-pound prospect that Golden yeah. Boy has. Jose. Jose Gonzalez, it's yeah. A good, good, good next opponent for Jose. That's another fighter who we don't know what he's about because he's knocking everybody on the first round. Right. Step him up. That way we can uh, praise him. Sure, put him in with the tough guy who's got a, a pesky, herky-jerky style. Yeah. We praise you if you do the work. We criticize you if you don't. <laughs> Jamal Herring says, my bad then, Dougie Fisher. And I get the, the smiley face with the thumbs up. Good luck to uh, Jamel and his uh, his upcoming fight. I believe he signed with uh, Top Rank. 
Oh, did it? Congratulations. Yeah, there. so he, we will see him on ESPN. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to Box Rec. Wait, I, I should know this. I should know his next fight. Jamel was a 2012 Olympian, right? Yes, he was an Olympian. Yeah. So he went to London. Oh, uh, there it is. My bad. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Look at the crew getting the tweets up right there away. There we go. Uh, Jamel went to 2012 in London with yes. uh, Joseph Diaz Jr. Yeah, and uh, Errol Spence Jr. Errol Spence. What a monster that kid is. Yeah, Dominic Brazil. Dominic Brazil, yeah. It's not coming up for me. Oh, what'd you do, Doug? You get, the box I rec block you know. out? Yeah, they blocked me out. Ain't that a... That a B word. Jamel, tell us who you're fighting next. I, I told you he's fighting. Uh, I got this tweet. Someone sent it to me. He is fighting. Uh, I know he's got to fight Lagarto. Up. Pablo Lagarto Sanchez in New York City on May 12th. Oh, okay. So that's the that's the Linares Lomachenko undercard. Yeah. I'm gonna be there, Jamel. Now, that's a fight. Wow. So you're going to talk about a dream fight. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think the night before is the Boxing Riders Association of America, their uh, annual banquet. I'm going to talk before us. combate ha sido a la distancia de ocho rounds. Por lo tanto, tenemos la decisión de los jueces. After eight rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Los tres jueces, Jerry Cantu, Jonathan Davis, y Max De Luca coinciden en sus tarjetas 80 a 72. All three judges have the same scores of 80 to 72. For your winner, by the way, of unanimous decision. Su ganador por la vía de la decisión unánime. Houston, Texas. Héctor Tanajara <laughs> Jr. I will correct that, Pablo Flores. I know you're probably reading Marlene's name. San Antonio, Texas. I know, and I know this about Texas. Don't say Houston or San Antonio. It's two different worlds. Uh, Hector Tanahara goes back home to the Riverwalk for a 13 and 0 record. Lead is in North End jamming. And he those Hefes and Hefes getting going. Doug, look at you bobbing your head. The boss and 